Welcome to iLecture Online, and here is a different kind of topic dealing with resistors in, in series in parallel. In addition to just resistors, we also have a capacitor in here, so these are called RC circuits, resistor and capacitor circuits. We still have our battery, but we also added a switch. And so what we're going to do is we're going to close the switch, start the clock, and then see what happens. And so you can imagine that since there's charges in the battery, those charges are going to be flowing through the circuit, through the resistor, onto the capacitor, and they will begin to charge the capacitor over time. And the more and more charge that builds up on the capacitor, the more you build up a potential difference across the capacitor, and the more that potential difference will begin to push back against the battery, until eventually the charges will be leaking onto there very, very slowly, and eventually the charge will just stop flowing altogether, and current will stop. So if you want to show that graphically, and you want to say, okay, what is the current I as a function of time t in a circuit like that? Well, initially, I will be fairly large. It'll start out at some initial value and then drop off exponentially like this or logarithmically, if you want to say that. So over time, and eventually, the current will drop down to zero when enough time has elapsed. So how fast will that happen? Well, that depends a lot upon the size of the capacitor. The bigger the capacitor, the longer it takes to fill it with charge. And on the size of the resistor, the bigger the resistor, the slower the current will be flowing through the circuit, the smaller the current will be, and therefore the longer it will take for the resistor to, to charge up. It is commonly said that a time constant, which is the time that it takes for about 63% of the capacitor to charge, or the ch for the capacitor to charge to about 63% of its final value, can be calculated by simply multiplying the resistance times the capacitance. And then it's also commonly said that after five time constants, so five times the resistance times the capacitor, the charge, Q, is approximately equal to Q final. In other words, you have pretty well filled up your capacitor with charge. It takes about five time constants. So you could say that after one time constant, the capacitor is now 63% uh, charged, and the current has now dropped to about 36% of its final value. And after five time constants, you can say that the capacitor, for all intended purposes, is fully charged. So we'd like to come up with the equation that defines that particular um, uh, graph. And you can see that the amount of current flowing in there would be equal to uh, some initial amount, I initial, times E to minus some value, let's call it K times time. And uh, notice that if time gets big, uh, e to the negative big value becomes a very small value and current will eventually drop down to zero. And the actual answer is the constant in this case is actually equal to one over the RC, the time constant. So we can say that the current in the circuit is equal to I sub naught times e to the minus t over tau, or you can say that I is equal to I sub naught times e to the minus, um, how would I write that? T over RC. So there's different ways in which we can write the equation, but typically these two bottom ones are the way in which we want to write the current in a capacitor circuit. So based upon that information, we're able to figure out uh, what the current is in the circuit at any point in time. We're also able to figure out what the charge is on the capacitor at any point in time, because you can see that the charge would increase in a way that looks more like this where eventually it would build up to a maximum charge, so it would be Q final, and so it's kind of the inverse of that. And so we can say that Q is equal to initial Q times the value of one minus e to the minus T over tau. Or we can say that Q is equal to initial charge, or maybe I should not say the initial charge, final charge. It's probably better to think of the final charge like that, times 1 minus e to the minus t over rc. And those are the equations that we can use to determine the charge on each capacitor or the current in each one of these circuits. All right, so let's do an example of this. Let's say that we have a 10-volt battery. Let's say that the capacitance is equal to 6 microfarads and say the resistance is equal to, let's say, R is equal to 10,000 ohms. 
there because I didn't have quite enough room in there. All right, so let's calculate the time constant of our uh, circuit here. So the time constant is equal to R times C, which is equal to the resistance of 10,000 ohms, times the capacitance of 6 microfarads, which is 6 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. Um, that would be equal to 6 times that, that would be 60,000 or 0 0.06 seconds. So this means that after 0 0.06 seconds, the capacitor would be about 63% charged. After five time constants, five time constant, which is equal to five times 0 0.06 seconds, which is equal to 0 0.3 seconds, you can say that by then, the capacitor is more than 99% charged. So after 0.3 seconds, 3 tenths of a second, this particular capacitor with this much resistance in the circuit would be more than 99% charge after the switch is closed about 0.3 seconds later. All right. Now, how much current is flowing in the circuit at any point in time? Let's say that I want to know what the current is, I, when the time is equal to 0 0.1 second. Let's say that I want to know the current in my circuit a tenth of a second after I close the switch. So you say, okay, I can figure that out because I know that from this equation right here, that the current I as a function of time is equal to the initial current after the moment I close the switch times E to the minus T over tau. And of course tau I already found what tau is equal to. So how do I figure that out? Well, I also need to know what the initial current is equal to. How much current is flowing through my circuit right after I close the switch? And since right after I close the switch, there's no charge yet on the capacitor, the circuit looks like, after I close the switch, like it's simply a voltage in a resistor type of circuit with no capacitor there. And I can say that means that my initial current, I initial, is simply equal to volts over the resistance, just like we know from Ohm's law. And so that would be equal to 10 volts divided by 10,000 ohms. And so that the initial current is equal to 0 0.001 amp, 1 1,000th of an amp. Then, now that I know my initial current, I can plug that value into here, and then I can solve for I when T is equal to 0 0.01 seconds. So, moving over here, like that, I can then say that I, when the time is equal to 0 0.1 second, that is equal to my initial current I, which is 0 0.001 amp times e to the minus time right here which is 0 0.1 second divided by tau which is 0 0.06 seconds. There we go. Now that will tell us the time after a tenth of a second. So let's grab our calculator. So we go 0.1 divided by 0 0.06 make that negative and use that as the exponent of e to the x. So that means this is equal to 0 0.001 amp times e to the minus that, which is equal to 0 0.189. And multiply that times 0 0.001 amps, that is equal to 0 0.000189 amps. So I, when t is equal to 0 0.1 seconds, will have dropped to this value right here. Now, what if I want to know the current after two seconds? So I, when the time is equal to 0 0.2 seconds, that is equal to 0 0.001 amps times e to the minus 0 0.2 over 0 0.06. And let's see what that gives us. So 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.06 make that negative, make that the exponent of e to the x. So that means that this is equal to 0 0.001 amp times 0 0.357. And so that would be equal to 0 0.00035. Oh, that would even be less, wouldn't it? 0 .0. Something isn't quite right here. Let me try that again. 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.06 equals 
make that negative, and the x, ah, there we go. I was missing a 0 because the current should be diminishing, right? We go over here. We can see that the current is dropping, so as more and more time goes by, the current should be less and less and less. So this is 0 0.0357. And that means we need an extra zero here, zero, three, five, seven seconds, or, or amps in this case, amps. So you can see that the current, I when time equals 0 0.2 seconds, keeps on diminishing as time goes on. So after 0.1 seconds is this much, after 0.2 seconds that much, and so forth. So you can see that as time goes by, there's less and less current flowing to the circuit as the capacitor is charging more and more and more. If I want to know how much charge the capacitor has on there, let's say after 0.1 seconds, so what is Q when time equals 0 0.1 seconds? What is that equal to? Question mark. I now take my equation right here, um, or I could take this one, just using tau right there. But I need to know what the final charge is. What is the final charge of my capacitor when it's fully charged? Well, when it's fully charged, there's no longer any current flowing here, and the voltage across the capacitor will be the same as the voltage across the, the um, battery. And I can say that by definition, the capacitance is equal to the charge divided by the voltage, or Q is equal to C times V. So the final charge on the capacitor will be equal to the capacitance times the potential pushing the charges on there. So this is equal to uh, uh, 6 microfarads, a microfarad is 10 to the minus 6 farads times 10 volts, which would be equal to 60 microcoulombs. So the final charge will be 60 microcoulombs, so then we can say that the charge when time is equal to 0 0.1 seconds is equal to, right here, the final charge, which we just found, which is 60 microcoulombs, Multiply times 1 minus 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. Since t is 0 0.1 seconds, we put 0 0.1 there. And tau, rc, was 0 0.06 seconds, 0 0.06 right there. So we multiply, we raise e to the minus 0.1 over 0 0.06. So 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.06 Make that negative, raise that to the exponent of e to the x, so that becomes 60 microcoulombs times 0 0.189, which is just what we found over here. And so this would be equal to times 60 equals, that would be 11.33. Oh, wait a minute. I made one mistake. It is 1 minus that. Ah, can't do that. Let me try that again. It would be 1 minus 0 0.189. There we go. So let's try it again. So 1 minus 0 0.189, which is 0.811 times 60, and that would be 48.7 microcoulombs. So that would be the charge on the capacitor after 0 0.1 seconds. And let me get out of the way so you can see it. So in recap, we have a capacitor circuit, what we call an RC circuit. We have a battery, we have a switch, which we can close and then start the time. We have a resistor, we have a capacitor. And uh, we have a 10,000 ohm uh, resistor and a 6 microfarad capacitor, 10 volts on the battery. We know that the time constant for the capacitor to fill with charge or for the current to flow through the circuit uh, is equal to R times C. The bigger the resistor, the bigger the capacitor, the bigger the time constant. After five time constants, the capacitor is pretty well fully charged and the current has pretty well dropped to almost zero. The equations that describe the current in the circuit are exponential equations like this, where k is 1 over tau. So we can write that the current in the circuit is always equal to the initial current times e to the minus t over rc, and the charge is always equal to the final charge times 1 minus e to the minus t over rc. Okay. Then if we want to evaluate the current or the charge as a function of time, we simply plug in what the initial current is, 
which we find by saying the initial current acts as if the capacitor isn't there, or to find the final charge, which is assuming that there's no longer any current flow, so the voltage across here is the same as the voltage across there. So you find the final charge, you find the initial current, then you plug that in as the constant in front of the E term, so you put the constant in here, or you put the constant in there, plug in the time constant RC in either one of the equations and plug in the time and that will allow you to find the current at various times or the charge in the capacitor as various, uh, at various times. And that's how you work with RC circuits.